hi in this video I will explain how to filter an Excel sheet using a numeric value this is my Excel sheet I have got a column called taken days that is a numeric column okay so let's start so here I'm using a manual trigger the connector I am after is Excel online business the action I am looking for is the list rows present in a table okay select the location of the Excel sheet then the file and next is the table so remember in power automate if you are working with uh, excel sheet you need to have a table associated with the excel sheet okay so next i'm going to show you how to filter a numeric column values here so the filter query we need to use here and it's against the taken days so let's look look for taken days is equal to 10 okay so the taken days is equal to 10 let's let's collect that value as well so just adding a compose here and uh, getting the name from the results as you can see here power automate inserted and applied to each loop the reason for this is because list rows present in a table can return more than one values okay so let's run this okay floor and successfully and in my excel sheet the condition is matching is equal to 10 that means I have two records here so that's the first record and this is a second record as you can see here that's the first record and this is the second record we got okay so now let's try to expand a little bit on the filter query here so instead of looking for taking days is equal to 10 what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say it's less than less than so which is LT if it's less than or equal to it should be LE if it's greater than or greater than it is GT if it's greater than or equal to it should be GE okay let's take greater than 10 then so okay just make it less greater than 5 so we know we have 1 2 3 there are 3 records matching that condition okay so I'm going to try this order data query here taking days greater than 5 let's see what we get okay the action failed because it says uh, it's an unsupported operation the only supported operations for the data queries are equal to not equal to contains starts with or ends with the, the these are the operators only supported so how do we overcome this situation in power automate for the excel sheet okay so to do that i'm going to remove this right now and taking out the filter query so first we need to get all the records through the list rows present in a table and the next step I'm going to use filter array data operation here so from values coming from the previous um, action step that's the values and here I'm going to say I need taken days is equal to so that looks uh, sorry taking days greater than 10 yeah that looks okay now is it so let's see what's the result now here is 
okay it's failed again actually so this time it says uh, it's a type and a string does not match so the reason for this error is because the take in days it's returned as a string value and you are comparing that against numeric value with a greater than operator so what we need to do here is we know this column is always going to return a numeric value so we need to convert this into a uh, into an integer so for that we need to use an expression called int uh, so the technique generally I use for in this case here is I need to go to click on the three dots here and click on peak code and just copy the item taken days See, that's the dynamic variable we mapped there so just right click that and say copy so that's been copied click done remove the current mapping type the expression int and then inside that parenthesis just paste that mapping value which is item question mark taken days the reason for this technique is because if you go to the dynamic content see you won't be able to directly map that variable using the expression that's the reason I went to the view code peaking the code get that element of the code I want which is a property um, I know what has been mapped and the syntax is item um, question mark taken days okay so let's try that now so now as you can see here we're converting that into an integer then comparing with an integer value so hopefully that should work here it is so that worked so that means if you can't apply certain filters through the data query what you need is you need to apply that through the filter array operation so here we haven't got got any Thing displayed here because it's greater than 10 I said okay that's my bad it should be 5 actually yeah so let's go back and run it again now so we should get three records I believe there we go so we got under the output we can see one two three there are three records is displayed here okay now uh, so we learn a couple of techniques here one is uh, you know if the filter array is supported directly then directly use the you know data filter query here if not try to filter it then you've got lots of options here and then hopefully you should be able to support uh, get your filters uh, using this technique as well okay so i'm going to change i'm going, just going to delete this now for the minute now i'm going to change my column name here so let's see the column name called taken days put a space here so sometimes you know column names can contain spaces okay save that okay I'll save that right go back to the my flow again uh, I just want to refresh it again that's the reason so edit okay this is my um, holidays uh, the file uh, that is that hopefully that should refresh again okay now um, delete this also okay next so we know that I have added a space in my column name so let's try to do that also here so taken space days is equal to 10 because that should work the equal operator is supported and it should work let's see what will happen now here it is it doesn't like that so it says it's a bad request it is and uh, you know it doesn't like that space uh, inside that um, um, filter query so what we need to do in this case here is we need to remove this again because if you got a column name in uh, a column name with spaces power automate won't support it for the excel uh, column names uh, for sharepoint you could put i think underscore x0020 underscore i think um, yeah i need to make sure i think that's the index so uh, that doesn't work i can't add that underscore x0020 underscore i can't add that for the space substitute here okay so for that what we need to do is remove that filter query again so get all the values from that excel sheet next again we are using the same technique here filter the array again and under the filter array get the values from the previous items then here what we want is um, again the same technique I can use 
um, so that's the int item question mark taken space days so here it is I'm adding a space there and then is greater than five let's test this Here it is, flow ran successfully, and I can see I have one, two, three. There are three records. Uh, it's returned actually. Okay, just to make it clear, I'm going to add a compose there. I should have added this earlier. And then um, under the filter query, I can say item. Here it is. So what that will do is that should return the individual items. Okay, here it is. There's a, there are three records because you can see from my filter greater than five, that is the first three records. So you can see here, first one, this is the second one, and that's the third one. Here it is. So how do we get just the name I want or taken days or department? So the technique we need to use there again is you can add another compose if you want. Okay, and type, go back to the expression again and type, um, you could use uh, different ways to do this. So one way to do this is, is you can, uh, you can use item and so that's uh, applied to each item. So uh, let's take the peak code again technique, copy that, we don't need that sign remember. So just need that mapping value only. No double quotes, no at sign. Just that items bracket apply to each. Okay, click done. Go back here, click on the expression. Just paste that. Question mark, then the property name, uh, which is the column name actually. So uh, put two single quotes and here I can say here name. Here it is. Now just run like it again. Here it is. So you can access directly through that operations, or there is another one more another one more way we can do it. So let's go back and inspect the last run history of that. We know that's the format of the value we are getting. That's a you know, JSON format again. So what you could do here is, instead the apply to each, you could add a pass JSON. Here it is. And I want the item. So that's item from the content. That's each item. Remember, that's a current item. That's what we want. And then the sample of the item looks like is this, the data. So that's where we generate the schemas. So just paste that. Generally, you run the run history, go to the run history, paste the JSON data you want, click done. Now, next step, you can add another compose. Place the cursor inside. You should be able to get the property. Now, see, here we go, name, dash, taken days. Yes. Now run it again. Okay, looks like four ran successfully here. So the first one we know it's item we mapped. So the item contains the whole uh, JSON format data. The second one we used, uh, you know, the technique of uh, that expression, uh, that is that value. Or if you don't like that using the expression, and if you think it's too complicated, you can use a pass JSON, pass the item, then we generate the schema. That's the schema we generated. That's the body it's going to output. So that in the next compose, we just mapped the name and the taken days. So you can, as you can see here, the first record is David Smith and 10 uh, taken days it is. And if you click on the next, you can again see the next value, which is Tony George. And the final one also there, you can see here also Anthony Smith. Here it is. 
okay so let's test the compose too here we go that's Anthony Smith as well so there are different ways you could you know get that um, values so the there are certain things you need to remember from this uh, um, exercise is um, if your sub if your raw data is supported you need to use the you know filter query if not you can use the filter uh, filter array but remember if it's a numeric value you need to convert that into the same data type and the technique i shown you here that you know the remember that syntax which you need to use here uh, item bracket question mark then in, inside the square bracket you need to give your column name and also uh, your filter queries if you got the column name with the spaces you won't be able to uh, you know run the filter query again you need to use the same technique which is a filter array uh, that's the that's the way you can uh, you know get the values uh, filtering um, by uh, using the power automate um, then again in the apply to each loop there are different techniques i shown one is the symbol one which is a pass json paste the uh, you know the test data from the run history then map the columns or if you are you know if you're good in expressions uh, just uh, use that expression value which is which we used is uh, that that's the value we used and if you want uh, you know the i have the taken days you just put taken space days instead of the name or whatever the column name it is you know that's why you do it generally so directly you can use uh, the values getting through the expression or you can use a pass json as well uh, it's up to uh, up to the you know the user who is building the flow how comfortable he is with the expressions um, or if he's uh, you know if he's really good with the expressions use that if not you can still use the pass json so th there are various techniques yeah so i hope this video is helpful and uh, thank you for watching